Hello everyone. I am Dr. Yukti Sharma from Department of Education, CI, University of Delhi. Today I am going to discuss with you a brief history of special education. Before we go ahead, let's discuss in this session what are we going to learn. So you would be able to deliberate on the relevance of history of special education. You would be able to discuss various eras in the history of special education, discuss the major paradigm shifts between various era, deliberate ways in which the condition of people with impairment changed, discuss the factors behind emergence of special education. Now the question arises, why should I know the history of special education? Because it is the history of special children, of people with impairments, of children with impairments. So to understand them, it's important to know their past. People with impairments have been called by various derogatory terms, maybe silly, mental, wrong, or in Hindi, like mandabuddhi, lula, etc. These words are actually the results of the way people were looked upon or treated in the past. And therefore, to understand how and where these stereotypes, these biases, got associated with these terms and with these people, it's important to go in the past. And even in the present times, we are not free of these ideas, of these words. And even we are not aware of these issues sometimes. We keep using these words without actually understanding their social meaning. Also, various practices, institutions or organizations with respect to people with impairment have emerged in various historical eras. Now, how we should study the history of special education? By going back to various eras. Yes, there are various eras that have been identified in the history of special education that are named to represent how they were looked upon and how they were treated in that era. So, let's go back in history. Now, First, we'll discuss the eras before special education because that makes the history of special education. The era of extermination or exclusion or abandonment. As the name itself says, this era was marked by an extreme era of exclusion. People with impairments were not, ex not only excluded from the society but also from life. They were killed, locked away, thrown from the hill by their own families because it was considered that they have something bad or evil in them. It was considered as, a, as they were a punishment of the God, especially the Greeks and Romans. They thought in this way. They were considered as useless and a burden on the society and therefore they had no place in the society. Birth of people with impairments for a family was like a curse. And the family tried to eradicate them in every possible way. It was in this era that people started calling them as idiots or morons. There was hatred in the society for them. The other people of the society, the non-disabled people of the society, they hated and wanted them to be eliminated totally from the society. And therefore they were abandoned by their own families because of the stigma which was attached to them. After this, in the medieval ages, came the era of ridicule or acceptance. Now it's very interesting because there is acceptance, but at the same time there is ridicule also. So it means they were finally accepted in the society, means they were not killed at least, but they were ridiculed. They were used for amusement and were given demeaning roles. Like for example, they were used as jokers. They were used as beggars. So all the demeaning roles like clowns, all the demeaning roles that we could think of in the society were given to them because they were thought of as they were good for nothing. There were no expectations from them. Forget about education. Forget about being educable. And this was the time when religion was influencing the society. And therefore people thought religiously. 
and they thought that these people with impairments were actually punished by God. And so, even though they were living, they were given some place in the society, but they were totally dependent on their family. The state didn't take any responsibility for the living or even their basic needs. It was only the religious groups or religious people who took care of them differently in different regions depending on which religion it was. This was when specialized hospitals for physical and mental disability were set up. And this was also done by the religious groups. So, although they were surviving, but they were surviving without any the era of prohibition and legal discrimination. Again, this was a phase in the medieval period. So, religion was still controlling the society. Religion was still dominant in the society. All the norms and codes of conduct were laid by religion. People used to use religious arguments to prove their point. And using the same religious arguments, they were discriminating the people with impairments. They were not given any legal rights, including the right of inheritance. So although they were living, but they were living with lots of restrictions. They were considered as impure. And because of that, they were not allowed to participate in social life. They were totally prohibited to go in most of the social places. So as we can see, this was the era of legal discrimination. So they were not only discriminated socially, but they were also discriminated legally. And therefore, they were again not getting any basic rights. Thus, this era was marked by acceptance in the society, but still there was prohibition. Prohibition to participate. Prohibition to take up. So next was the era of sympathy or asylum or institutionalization. This was the period of Renaissance, the beginning of Renaissance. And it was this time that people with impairment and their abusement was getting questioned. They were seen sympathetically, not because of their condition, but because they were not getting their rights. It was the time when, very, when many activist groups, they started questioning the state and forced the state to take their responsibility. The state was forced to establish institutions. And at this time, various mental asylums, shelter homes, institutions related to rehabilitation and various organizations associated were set up. And these organizations and institutions we know were specific to the disabilities. And therefore, this era was called as era of institutionalization as many institutions for taking care of these people were set up. But still, education was not in picture. It was basically for their rehabilitation, for making them learn the basic life skills. Only this much was expected from them, not more. After this came the scientific era, when the Renaissance movement had spread in the Western world. It was somewhere in the 17th century. And this was the time when people had started thinking rationally because they were becoming scientific. This was the modernist era, when science was taking the most important part in the society. And this was the time when people with impairment were now getting recognized as being educable. And it was based on the premises that humanity associated with, with humanity is associated education. That is, every human in this world 
deserved to get education and so were people with impairment. Modernist and scientific ways of thinking at that time started giving birth to new ideas. New ideas such as equality. How people may be different from each other, they may have different abilities, they may have different kinds of bodies, but still they may be equal. Equal in terms of getting their rights. And so this was the time when people started thinking that how we can educate people with impairment. Although they were not included in the general education system, but at least education as a right was being thought about for them. So, an alternative system of education was born and this was called as special education because it was for special people. They were called as special people in order to remove those derogatory terms that have been used in the past for them. Being the scientific era, a neutral term like special was used for them. They were called as special people, special children and the education that was specifically meant for them was called as special education. Also, special education took place in different schools, schools other than the general schools and these schools were also called as special schools. So, the special children started getting education but they were getting it in isolated settings. They were segregated from other children, the so-called non-disabled children. And that is why this era was called as era of segregation or isolated setting. And this isolated setting was the, were the special schools. So, to conclude, we can say that the history of special education tells us the condition of people with impairment and their treatment in different phases of history. Also, we understand that these eras changed with major paradigm shifts in the society and the society's attitude accordingly kept changing towards them. The institutions for them were set up when the state took their responsibility at the beginning of the Renaissance. Special education emerged as an alternative form of education specifically meant for special children in the scientific era when ideas such as equality were getting discussed. So for this session we'll stop here but in the next session we are going to take the story ahead and we'll understand how special education evolved into inclusive education. What were the stages in between special education and inclusive education? And why inclusive education? Why inclusion? So, for this session, we'll take a break and we'll stop here. Thank you very much for being there.